previously on Dread and Breakfast. And you see a woman sitting there. Um, hi, ma'am. I'm going to say kind of <laughs> loudly. Ghosts are very untrustworthy. You see the scarf flick as it leads into a mouth. Oh, fuck, guys. Bob! You hear a radio that's not one of your own. It's telling the story of the camp. That's what we used to do on our stupid radio show is we just told the camp legend. Well, why does anybody tell a story? Oh, my God! <laughs> Lurch, no! You hear what sounds like someone chopping wood. You see blood dripping off of his axe. Oh, good. So it's a murder ghost. <laughs> I wink. Squirrels hate salt. You toss a stream of salt at him. You watch as he begins to kind of stumble away back into the woods. Lurch, I think I'm a ghostbuster. <laughs> <laughs> Something stands at the edge of the water, the murky red waters being thrown against the shores. Debris churns in the water, ripped and thrown against itself before finally sinking into the depths or being bashed into land unrecognizable in its destruction. The rain pelts down, forceful and stinging. If the man had actually been wearing a hat, it would have been ripped away by now. Instead, something that looks like a hat simply flaps in the wind. The sound of static grows as different voices seem to come from him. Had one heck of a weekend. Get back up. Get an ambulance up to the camp. He said he skies the huge janitorium for back to school sick. Woman wandering the shore, searching for her child and husband to drown that one small. The static cuts off the rest as the thunder roars and the wind whips through. The soft crying begins. A much, much smaller figure stands next to the man. They struggle, but they can't get away. Instead, the two wait there on the shores as the sounds get stolen away by the storm. Alrighty, so we wanted to pick up where uh, uh, Lurch and Fob were. No, no, guys, guys, yeah. guys, guys, no, wait, this is good, this is good, this is good. I Listen, I, I re-listened, I have a theory that kind of confirms no, it. No, that fits, that fits. Yeah, maybe. Good, because as is tradition, I'm totally lost. <laughs> no, it's good, no, no, it's good. So yeah, so two doomed bros outside of a shed. <laughs> two doomed bros sitting in a hot tub. Chilling in the shed, five feet apart because they're both dead. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. We did it. Immediately derailed. We're all good. Great great job tonight, guys. All right, everyone. And that's a wrap. We really nailed it. Let's go. Wow. Thank you, Alicia, so much for DMing. <laughs> all right. The two of you stand as the rain comes pouring down. You stand heaving and breathing heavy as you just saw something that you cannot explain. As you guys are standing there just trying to kind of process it, Lurch, you feel something really warm start to kind of come from your arm. You look and you see a long slice that apparently the ghost had left you that you hadn't realized in the confusion. Ooh. Your arm starts to feel warm and numb as the blood starts Ugh. pouring down from it, dripping Ooh. onto the forest floor before being washed away. The now open door for the shed swings open back and forth in the storm, rattling. What do you do? Shit, we got the shed open. Uh, hey! <laughs> Fuck you! 
a lurch. There's a shed. <laughs> no, no, no. I was about to. I was about to go talk to him. Uh, lurch. Uh, yeah. Um, blood. It blood belongs on the inside. Um. <laughs> This yeah. is not good. Um, That's like the first thing they teach you in med school, right? At least in pre-med, yeah. And then, I don't know what the second thing is. I, we got <laughs> to blood and I was kind of done. Oh. Um, <laughs> anyway. Lurch, did you not finish med stuff? No. You know this. I dropped out as soon as there was blood involved. Lurch, are you able to be the medic that we thought you were? I don't know. They keep hiring me. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. You know, <laughs> hey. <laughs> they let me have the first aid kit, and uh, that seems to be all that's required. Yeah, there's really no getting behind a great prop, you know? So, we already needed to get you to a hospital, and now me, which is more. Um, I mean, yeah, but, like, first, children, and also our friend. Let, what if we just bandage you up first? Maybe we should lead with that? Yeah, yeah, the band-aid. Stop the blood. I like that a lot. <laughs> All right. We need to go inside and get, like, a pillowcase. I mean, I have a first aid kit. Oh, well then... Let's go inside and open my cool first aid kit. And then... Let's do that. Maybe the shit. Yeah. But that's Jacob talking. Lurch doesn't care about the shit. <laughs> Lurch cares about blood. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's let's go inside. Maybe, um... Do we teach the kids first aid? Do we teach the kids safety things? I mean, I don't. <laughs> Yeah, to a degree. Not, like, that much. But I imagine that probably Scout has at least a little bit with survival training of, like, teaching kids, like, hey, here's, like, some basic shit you do in this kind of situation. Kane, confirm. I can't remember if you need to hold your arm above your heart or below your heart. I think it's below your heart because you want the blood to not... Yeah, yeah, so... Uh, you definitely need to have your arm below your heart. Hashtag and concussed. <laughs> let's uh, let's go inside. All right, you open up the door to hear a shrill scream of ah, like a little battle cry, uh, as you see Brandy with one of the spoon ladles in her hand. She stops before she hits you, and she's like, "Did we win?" <laughs> the squirrel's gone. <laughs> she looks at you because, like, she knows this isn't a squirrel. But that was our fun code word for it. It was. She gives you a look. She's like, good. I hate squirrels. <laughs> That's okay. We'll unpack that later. Um, <laughs> Lurch and I just need to go to the kitchen for a minute. Do you mind watching out the window and just letting us know if any anything or anyone comes this way? She nods and uh, very seriously goes to take her position as lookout. Can I see your ladle for a second? Okay. She hands you the ladle. And I take it and then I like tap her on each shoulder and I say, I'm deputizing <laughs> you. You are now captain of the watch. <laughs> There's a mixture of like, she's serious. She wants to be taken seriously. But also, you deputized her? as like something cool so she accepts it like she doesn't you there's this mixture of like i'm too old for this and also a mixture of i'm i'm gonna be the captain of the watch <laughs> you're my favorite deputy oh there we go she takes her ladle back and she goes watches the windows and okay. every couple of minutes she says all clear and moves to a new window oh that's my girl <laughs> Okay, good. Now she won't see what we're going to have to do. So, do you have a staple gun? Oh, no! I think there's some gauze in there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, try try the gauze. Okay. I think that's what they told me to do. Uh, just, just make it stop. If you have Lurch take off his shirt so you can actually see the wound, you'll see it starts, like, only a little bit down from the neck. Oh, God. Like, oh. across part of the shoulder onto his arm. Oh. It's just most of the blood is trickling down the arm. Okay, so yeah, we definitely, like, maybe we need to, like, put you upside down so that all of this is below your heart. <laughs> As you guys are, like, struggling and trying to figure out this first aid stuff, you hear uh, Brandy as she yells out, Three approach from the south! Uh, squirrels? Squirrels? <laughs> um, chipmunk? 
Yikes. I don't know what the other <laughs> term is. Badgers. Raccoons. Raccoons are scarier than squirrels. No, they're not. They're little. They, they just they just like eating your trash. Fine. Three raccoons from the south. <laughs> Uh, my opinion of this child has just done a complete 180. Um, okay, let them in if they're good raccoons. Brandy goes and opens the door and yells out, Identify yourselves! I don't know. And it is, of course, you two. You guys basically had kind of like snuck back this way. You didn't see the man uh, after finding Freddy, who is carrying a number of snacks that he managed to stuff in his shirt. Good man. You guys start to approach the building when you hear Brandy yell out to you. Uh, hey, Brandy. Brandy, love the enthusiasm. We might want to whisper, okay? It's, it's, it's us. It's Mots. Oh, okay. We got attacked. That's why I'm asking. Oh, I usher everybody in. <laughs> <laughs> in the cabin, debris. <laughs> when she does see that it's you, Scout, uh, she runs up and gives you a big bear hug. I, I hug her back, absolutely. And then we do like a little bird hand signal that is like our secret little thing. <laughs> she <laughs> loves it. She salutes, and when you guys go in, she like grabs your hand and pulls you in so you can see what is going on. <laughs> oh, good lord. <laughs> okay, so you see... I have Lurch lying, like, on the kitchen table, but with, like, the top half of your torso, like, off the kitchen table. Oh, like, my God. Like, leaning down backwards. Because you want to you wanna make sure that the wound is below the heart. <laughs> no. And no. there's just blood, like, pouring out. Without a word, Scout literally pushes Cube out of the way and tells him, sit down. <laughs> Oh, I fell. The second you push me, I fall over. Oh, that's oh fine. God. Oh, <laughs> and I'm going to um put Lurch right side up and like start tending to his wounds. <laughs> of course, I gotta do everything around here. Just like you gotta keep the wound lower than the heart. And Quiet enough from you, concussed boy. Oh, I'm out. That's the last <laughs> thing I say before I pass. Oh God. Brandy closes the door and goes back to look out. Well, Scout is like tending to Lurch and presumably putting some sort of like pressure on this. Mm -hmm. Moss will like tap Cube on the cheek to like wake you up and be like, okay, Cube. Mm -hmm. Hey, good morning. Good oh. morning. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> um, what, what, what happened? What's going on? Mots. Hey, I'm a ghostbuster. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's ghosts. So there was like a scary guy with an axe and he was out there like chopping down trees. That's nah, a squirrel. <laughs> and so then Lurch went out there to, I think, go talk to him. And then he hit him with his axe and then I, 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 I stabbed him. <laughs> Cube went out there and threw salt at him and um, he disappeared, I think. I look at Lurch and I say, what did he look like? Like a guy with an axe? Was he wearing a hat? I think so. I was more focused on the axe. He was like an old timey looking guy. Wait, 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 wait. Lurch, Lurch, was he bloody? Was he bloody? Yes. He had blood on his face. It was disgusting. Oh, shit. Sorry, Brandy. <laughs> that's, that's the story. The story. It's, 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 it's the father, Mr. Ryder, the guy who owned the house. It's the father hunted them in the woods with an axe. You see a bloody man in the woods. That's got to be him. We were just telling that story for goofs. Mots, that's just something from our radio show. But we heard it when we were kids at the camp. That's a story that's been passed down. Yeah, it's just like folklore to make the kids a little spooked out so they won't like leave their cabins. You don't tell me this is real. Okay, but I saw a man with blood on his face and also an axe. And he ran away when I hit him with salt, which is weird. I'm a ghostbuster. <laughs> I don't think he ran away. He just like, poof. Even better. Oh, oh, wait, there's that lady in the cellar too. Do you think that was a ghost? What lady in the cellar? Didn't you see her? She was like also old timey and hanging out. It was weird, but so much... Weird stuff has happened. It doesn't even. Am I still bleeding? Is, is we done? <laughs> well, has anyone seen a kid? 
Who's there was well, the other one other with oh my god monster. other than other than our kids obviously <laughs> a ghost kid there was the Mots Mots you were freaking out about a thing the blanket you were you were freaking out about a blanket you gave an extra blanket out to a kid and Freddie didn't you say Brandy hit you and Brandy you never did Captain I mean it was definitely a girl that hit me and she's the only girl yeah so ghosts are real. <laughs> And, no, they're and not. tongue man. They're all squirrels. No, everyone, everyone, <laughs> listen. I love math. Math is logic. <laughs> I need you to come with me and suspend that for two seconds. I have, I have, I'm I'm making a formula. Come I'm with making a theory. Me and you'll see <laughs> in a world of pure <laughs> terror. I of hate it. Pure Ooh. Equilateral. I don't know that. Of ghouls and ghosts and goblins. Ooh, very good. <laughs> All right, continue with your proof, Mots. Is there like like a pencil or like chalk or like ketchup I can start writing on like the wall with? Like I need I need ketchup. a chalkboard. I'm only giving ketchup now because <laughs> <Perfect. laughs> we start with relish. We come to ketchup. There's blood. <laughs> You find like a, it looks like he was doing the crossword puzzle from like an old newspaper. Fuck yeah. I start like writing it out as if it's like a geometric proof. And I'm like, okay, if, if, if then, right? That's a math thing. <laughs> if, if all the stories are true, then ghosts are real. And the tongue, tongue man, Licky Lou, it eats <laughs> ghosts, is trying to eat <laughs> the ghosts, right? I, and, and, and I think Mott's like, has a moment where like he's like scribbling really fast and then he just kind of stops and gets like really pale as like he has a realization guys what if i think this is our fault the tongue thing had a radio and it was listening to us what if it what if we brought it here because that's 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 what it's doing right like it's hearing the stories and it's going to where the stories are to eat the ghosts or whatever like we told the story about the house, it ended up in the house. There's the story about the one girl who ran away from camp. People see them in cars. What if that thing caused the car crash? Huh. So you're saying we summoned it? N- not on purpose, but we talked and it listened. Well, if we started telling the story, then I suppose we're responsible for finishing the ending. I, I mean, listen. This isn't this isn't proven. We don't have as much evidence. We need to do some more proofs to prove the thing. But that's that's. Damn it, guys! I, that's the best I got. It's good enough for me to go on. But I, the thing is, I know how to deal with coyotes and bears. I don't know how to deal with ghosts. I have some thoughts. All right. Skeptically turns towards him. <laughs> it didn't like salt. So that. That's one thing. They're not chill if you ask them to, like, stop what they're doing. Mm. Uh, and they don't like giving up their axes. I can tell you that. Did you ax nicely? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Wait, Lurch. The shed was open. The shed? Smash cut. What? <laughs> Smash cut. You see the shed outside. It's open. Smash cut back in. <laughs> You're still standing there. <laughs> Lurch, I think I think you should stay lying down. I, and Mots is just going to start writing out all the stories he can think of from camp. Mm-hmm. If, if, if one of you guys wants to go check something out, I'm going to, I got to uh, hyperfixate. I'm going to go see what's in the shed. Scout starts rummaging through the kitchen for any and everything that contains salt. <laughs> Incredible. Okay. Salt, soy sauce. There's a lot. He has a lot of preserved food. Yeah, Ooh. preserved food. <laughs> Lots of jerky. Oh, fuck yeah. Excellent. Then there's probably hella salt here. We're going to okay. kill the ghost with jerky. This episode sponsored by Beef Jerky. By Thank Slim you. Jim. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. I'm not convinced Licky Lou is a ghost, but I, I guess we'll get there when we get there. So, okay, if the thing that we summoned was Licky Lou, why are we trying to take out the ghost? We should be focused on taking out Licky Lou. Or is this all like we've got four different bosses and then a mega boss that we got to take down? <laughs> mega boss. Uh, and I can tell you the ghosts you want to keep away from them too. But they seem pretty easy to deal with once we're dealing with them and not talking to them like they're normal people. I mean, no offense, but one of those ghosts almost snipped Lurch into ribbons over here. So 
Yeah, because we were dealing with them like people. Either way, I'm all for speedrunning and bypassing the mini bosses and heading straight for this tongue thing, because I think that's the thing that's causing the ghost to go aggro. Hold on. Hold on. We don't have a two-side situation. This isn't like a Sharks and the Jets situation. <laughs> we got a triangle here. It's like Cats the musical, <laughs> and then it's like another musical that I definitely know about. Xanadu. Z- yeah, it's so we got Cats the musical, we've got Xanadu, and then we've got Phantom of the Opera, and they're all competing for tickets. This metaphor is bad, but like we just gotta let two of them like merge each other out, and then obviously cats, which is us, will just sweep the floor. Yeah, Cube, I don't want to be cats. Listen, I. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? It's a beautiful musical. I don't think we can let this thing run rampant and risk it eating someone else. Well, especially when we've got two kids still on the loose. I mean, they're pretty good at hiding, and I don't think this thing is looking for people. It's looking for ghosts. But what will it do when the ghosts are all gone? Exactly. So it it came here because it heard our broadcast. That's what we're thinking? Oh, uh, Q. We gotta broadcast something else to get it out. We lure it to the radio tower. That's far enough away that, that wherever the kids are hiding, I guarantee they're not up there. Or even farther away. Like, we tell it there's cool ghost snacks in... Canada. Yeah. What's to keep it from coming back, though? You know what I mean? It knows there's food here. If we get rid of it this year, it's going to come back next. We got to lure it somewhere where we are so we can take care of it. All right. Well, we know our way in and out and upside and down of the radio tower. What if we tell another story, lure it out there, and attack it? Yeah. Yeah. I like that plan, too. And I think we can outfit ourselves with the stuff in the shed. Shopping montage. <laughs> da, 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 da. I want I want a pair of hedge scissors. <laughs> you guys go to the shed and as you are looking in, first off, you realize this is not where he keeps most of his gardening tools and stuff like that. Aww. Instead, this is where he keeps the contraband. Oh, fuck oh yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> guns, 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 Even guns, better. guns, and guns, guns. You do find a shotgun. Ooh. What about a chainsaw? <laughs> no chainsaw. Mm. That would be with the gardening supplies. I don't want a gun. What about a bow and arrow? <laughs> Scout, it's okay. You're not getting the gun. Hey, Lurch. Yeah? Want it? And I jerk my head to the shotgun. And then after I do that, I hold my head and just like sit down for two minutes because I jerked my <laughs> oh, head <God>. too fast. <laughs> Seems like it would uh, beat an axe. Yeah, I'll take this. There you go. All right. You have four shots for it. And you'd have to reload after the two. Ooh. You got a double barrel shotgun. This is the coolest thing ever. Fuck yeah. So it's contraband. Are there like fireworks? Ooh. Yes. Not anything serious because this is stuff that kids snuck in. No, no, but it's like, you know, probably some like Roman candles and like mm-hmm. basic firecrackers. Like those would be good, like diversion type things because mm-hmm. Cube has a lighter. Mm-hmm. I was going to say each of you guys can give me a reasonable option for something being in here. Ooh, I have to think about that. I have a, I have a thing and it's very okay if this isn't in here. I'm going to put this wish out into the world. Let's hear it. One child, or maybe it was a counselor one year was really into oh, ninjas. I thought you were going to say one child. <laughs> I was thinking oh, that no. too. I'm like, a oh, child. God. <laughs> one child that just wants revenge on the world that wronged them. All no, right, there's a ghost in there. Everyone I don't roll want initiative. This. I don't want no. this. Um, no, one child or maybe a counselor brought in ninja throwing knives or stars or something. I, I could give you throwing knives. Like that, that would be a thing. Yeah. I'll take throwing knives. There's like a three pair of that. Cube thinks that's cool. Anyone else? I kind of want, and I don't know if this is like contraband necessarily. Well, hear me out. I want a net (laughs) and I am okay with it being like someone brought in like a badminton net or like a net from the sports field that got tangled and isn't like they didn't know what to do with it. So they just shoved it in here and forgot about it. It's a volleyball net that needs to be repaired. Yeah, like something like that. 
I want I want a big net. <laughs> yeah. I I would say it's a volleyball net that got damaged. He didn't want to repair it, so he kind of threw it in here and forgot about it. Oh shit, Ted. <laughs> you guys have been wondering where the volleyball <laughs> net was all summer. We haven't been able to play volleyball. We've just had to imagine the net. This is the first year in 40 years we haven't had our volleyball tournament. God damn it, Ted. <laughs> I have a hatchet, so like I've got a weapon. I'm going to take some fireworks because it seems like it would be potentially good for like setting up some sort of diversion should we need it. I love it. We're just launching him at his face. I'll say you get two. But two big boys. Two like Roman candles. Yeah. Well, Roman candles aren't big boys. I'm thinking like a pack of firecrackers and then I want like on 4th of July we set off like it's not a mortar, but like, you know, one oh. of the ones that goes like up and stars out. Like I want Yeah. Like a firework. Yeah, like a decent not just like a flimsy little flim flamin' one. Yeah, sorry. That's what I was thinking of when you said Roman candles. Oh no, Roman candles are like the wands that you hold and like the oh, it shoots out the balls. I see. I was thinking of the ones that you like set down and it's like a mortar that goes off. Like a little Yeah, I, I want so I want a packet of um Christine's got demands. I do. I want a packet of firecrackers, a mortar, and then I will pull for a smoke bomb. Ooh, I love that. That's cool. I don't know why I know so much fireworks. <laughs> when you said a pack of firecrackers, are you talking about a pack of the, the Roman candles? No, no. The ones that like you set off the one and then they all go. Oh, when they, like, actual yeah, firecrackers. Cool. Yeah, yes. firecrackers. Okay. You know what? Sure. Let's go with that. Fuck okay. Yeah. Can I pull for a smoke bomb as well? Yeah. I think that sounds okay. fair. Excellent. So quick tower update. Looks not the worst I've seen it. But yeah. it's definitely not the best. So yeah, some jerk pulled a <laughs> lot last time. Uh, oh god. Okay. Oh. Okay. It's fine. We're fine. We're fine. It's We're fine. always going to be fine. Ha ha! Success. Yep. You managed to find a smoke bomb in there. Yes, yeah. and it's purple. Ooh. <laughs> we sure. Love it. Hey, cube. Throw me that ladder. I do. I'm usually a pretty good shot. It goes to a place <laughs> that's like two feet to the right of where you are. All right. We definitely need to get you checked out. Ghostbuster. <laughs> Do we have a radio system that's reliable? No, and that uh, seems to draw at places. You guys have your uh, walkie-talkies on you, but the creature seems to be able to mess with it. All right, listen, I I think we make a beeline for the tower, and I think we trust that Mikey and Johan are really good at hiding. They were great at Capture the Flag this year, so I think their best bet is us getting this thing away from camp. What do we do about the two that are with us? Have them stay here. Tell them to hunker down. Hunker yeah. down. We've got one on watch. We got one on watch. She's at another window and she's like, all clear. And she moves to a different one. Excellent. Brandy, remember, we want to we wanna be a little bit quieter with that. Just a little bit. All clear. That's perfect. Uh, can I borrow your ladle for one second, Brandy? She hands you her ladle. Thank you. And I go up to Freddy and I, I tap him on both shoulders and I say, Freddy? What? I am making you the captain of hide and seek. There is no seeking, only hiding. <laughs> you have to stay in this house. So I'm just the captain of hiding? Well, no, because someone's going to try to seek you and you cannot let them find you. What? Gotcha. He looks terrified. <laughs> oh, well. never mind. Um, hmm, maybe, well, he didn't. Oops. Uh, just, I guess, yeah, just the captain of hiding. So, Brandy, here's the, here's the play. You're the captain of Lookout, right? Mm -hmm. If you see a squ another squirrel, Freddy, who's now the captain of hiding, and you are going to hide. Okay. Okay. I'm probably not the one to say this. Us grown-ups are going to go and we'll come back. All of you? We're raccoons. <laughs> Stop the animals. Are you all going? Yes, we're all going. Sometimes counselors have to go do things that campers can't do, and this is one of those times. But I trust you. I know that you know how to handle yourself, so I need you to trust me. You're going to come back? Scout's honor. She nods. Freddy looks terrified. Can I just go under the bed the whole time until you come back? Absolutely. 
That is right. perfect. He goes under the bed with the snacks. I was just <laughs> going to say, bring plenty of snacks. Hey, Freddy, can I can I get a bag of the Doritos? <laughs> Three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> You've taught You've him taught well. Him well. <laughs> he stole them from my store already, so that's extra bold. Emergency surcharge. <laughs> that's <laughs> diabolical. This I kid, he's going places. He's going to be the next Jeffrey Bezos. Uh, what if instead I went and uh, fought for your life? I mean, I go squirrel hunting. <laughs> <laughs> How about chips and a juicy fruit? If you come back. Deal. <laughs> I'm getting really emotional. He hands the food over to you. Oh, that's extra sad. The last supper. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Drink of the fruit in this juice. The juicy fruit. All right. You see Freddy kind of go under the bed, wrapped up in his blanket. Brandy takes her station with her trusty ladle at one of the windows and gives you a firm nod trying to look braver than you think she might actually be. I would like to give her a salute on my way out. <laughs> she salutes you back and you could tell she kind of hit herself a little bit with the ladle. Oh, <laughs> my girl! <laughs> she needs some practice. It's fine. guys step out into the storm and start to make your way on the old familiar path to the fire tower. The wind is howling, the rain is pelting. As you go, you struggle to kind of stay together and stay upright. The storm is only worse. You see branches getting thrown about in the wind. The rain pelts into you. Your clothes now are all completely soaked through, dragging you down, chilling you to the bone as you guys make your way up. As you continue, off in the distance, you start to hear those thwacks again. Mm. They don't seem to be coming closer. They seem to be coming not exactly from where you were, but somewhere around there. He's at it again. I'd imagine, like, Mots and Scouts are, are, like, in front, right? Mm -hmm. Could we, like, huddle under a big, big tree where the wind isn't as strong? And could I pull out my walkie? Yes. Okay. Consider it a proof of concept. I want to come over the walkie and, like, Mots is shaking. Like, this is, he is cold and he is scared and this all sucks. But he's going to start saying, okay, um... What, what, once, once upon a time, there there was a man in the woods about, oh, I don't know, maybe like uh, 400 yards past the Arts and Crafts building to the north, kind of by the pool, and uh, he um, was chopping wood, and he was also dead, because he murdered his whole family. He's a dead ghost. Very tasty. Tastes like bacon. <laughs> in the woods. Uh, as Mots is doing this, Scout starts to, like, run a couple, like, yards away and, like, has the firecrackers in one hand and the lighter lit in the other, like, Ooh. ready in case something, like, starts to come towards them so that she could lure it away. Yes. After you say this into your walkie-talkie, you hear as the static starts to kind of take over oh. and it slides between a couple different things. <laughs> it stops with there's a man in the woods, murdered his whole family. And then it just goes to pure static. We're gonna hope that's good enough. All right, let's keep going. You continue your way up, and you don't get that much farther before you hear the sound of a man screaming. And then silence. Oh. Scout runs and starts following the rest of the group back towards the tower. Yeah. You guys start running up the last portion of it, climbing uphill as you guys make your way, trying to avoid the slippery rocks and the roots that try to tangle up your feet and bring you down. You guys make your way through puddles, forcing yourself to climb upward on this path that you have done so many times before, but seems to feel so much longer until finally you see the silhouette of it. Hey, guys. Yeah? I'm feeling kind of tired. 
we're, this is like the last hill. I'm just gonna sit down. Nope. For nope. A minute. Nope. Just, no, for, just for a real quick minute. I just need a tight five. Cute. I will carry you. I pick him up. <laughs> I don't know that you can, but I mean, the adrenaline of the moment kicks yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. Like it's not graceful. Make a pull. Oh. All right. Yeah. I will. I will pull to not leave you behind. Oh, oh my, my gosh. Oh, if it That's falls kind of right you. here. Oh, if it falls. It's not right gonna here. fall. It's not gonna oh, fall. This is a very steady. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. It's very steady. You look at you and you're. Just don't pick that one. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got you. Okay. I got you. I like I, <laughs> I like try to fireman carry you, but like the weight distribution is off, so I'm like crab walking, like crab running. It's not you. great. You're not gonna win any kind of marathons like no. this, but you got him. <laughs> Jacob, your arm has gone from feeling very warm to very cold. Oh fuck! That's a good. <laughs> As you guys see the silhouette and come upon the fire watch tower it is an older building that reaches high up into the sky well above the tree line here if it was painted at one point that paint is all gone parts of it are squeaky and rusty and everything but for all of you it has always seemed safe well made at the very least you guys go ahead and when you reach the base you start to make your way up the stairs i think scout would let everybody climb up ahead of her and she would be the last one up i i was gonna ask how cube gets up (laughs) i can walk a little bit i'm just really tired okay and i'm coming up from behind so like i'm here to help too how does scout help lurch get up i am curious about that um you just have one arm that isn't working super great right yeah. That and a mixture of blood loss. It's because it wasn't below the heart. Because he was left alone with Cube for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Question, is it stairs or is it a ladder? If it's like the fire towers I've been in, it's like real steep stairs. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I was picturing just like a fucking rope ladder or some shit. That's wild. No. I mean, y'all, if it's a rope ladder, then we're definitely not also coming up. No, that's fair. No, that's fair. Okay. Am I basing this slightly off the game Firewatch? Maybe. <laughs> I mean, uh, Alicia, that's what I'm picturing in my mind. So. Good. Good. Yeah. So, okay. I, I would just be next to him, like allowing him to lean on me as we go up. Yeah, I'm just saying, don't put yourself at the top of the tower just oh, yet. Good. Oh, good. dear. <laughs> so both of you guys are helping them by having them lean on you mm-hmm. as you kind of, like, try to hurry your way up there. The stairs are creaking under the weight as you guys are moving them as all four of your radios turn on <laughs> with a loud amount of static. And you hear a fifth Oh, shit. Start to come from the woods. You look down and you see the glint off of this red, what almost looks like sunglasses. Fuck me. It's not our people. (laughs) Hi, Licky Lou. (laughs) You see as he comes into the clearing near where your tower is, and you see as he seems to drop something on the ground next to him. Oh, shit. What does he drop? Oh, shit. It's not a living child, is it? You can't see you're too far away. Motherfuck. We, we certainly have binoculars up there. You probably do have binoculars up there. You're not up there, though. Climb! Yeah, we, we, we go I, faster. I can go take a look. No, no, I'm Q, a ghostbuster. You're ahead of me, and I'm shoving your ass up this tower. For Scout and Mots, you guys are trying to assist your two injured people to get up. So I'm going to say it's going to be two pulls for each of you guys. Okay. That's fair. Okay. You got it. You got it. You're good. Oh, oh fuck. <laughs> Woo. There's one. There's one. Okay. Okay. We're living it. Got We're it. living got it. it. Got We're it. loving got it. it. Uh-huh. Power uh-huh. friendship and found family. Oh, it's hard to pull. Okay. Okay. We're fine. Uh, easy. Easy. Okay. Easy. Easy. Spicy. All right. There's one. I there's one of us. Center myself. And here I go. <laughs> you... Got it. Like, really, if you stay near the bottom, I think that's your best bet. Uh, I think. Ah! Oh, fuck. (laughs) Oh, Jesus Christ. (laughs) So, okay, okay. Tower bad. Tower real bad. 
if she refuses the second one, uh, she would be fine, but not whoever she's helping. Uh, it's, can't, no, I. It's it's up to you. Scout isn't gonna leave someone behind in danger. I can get. I can make my way up on my own, guys. Your goal is to get up to the top. It doesn't mean all of you have to get up to the top as quick as possible. That's yeah, I can. Fair. I can take my time. I can just lean on the rail. But the Licky Lou is right there. At the edge of the woods. How high up are we? Like ten feet up ish? Oh my god. I now have to look up how tall is a fire <laughs> watch. <laughs> Sorry. The, what's the cosine of the angle that the ladder is at? The, yeah, and the tangent with the <laughs> hypotenuse. That's so right. apparently it's like sixty to hundred twenty feet. Jesus. Yeah, they're big. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're probably about a fourth of the way up. That's a yeah. long climb and Lurch only has one arm. I'm pulling. Oh fuck. Okay. Jesus. Okay. 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 Proceed. That's 25 feet. Yeah. That's out of Scout. that's Come out on. of striking. You, you, you got it. You got it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Lord Jesus Christ, Christine. He's not dead yet, folks. You're welcome. You're welcome, Lurch. <laughs> so you are struggling as you're trying to help them get up. You hear... We are broadcasting live from the old firewatch tower. Oh, 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 that's a good one. And they never found the bodies, you know. These stories aren't just stories. Dead mouths don't and eat. she threw herself and she walks back. And shoved her into to the mountain air and, and she screamed. The ghost you know, wouldn't let the ghost bite. Ghost. And don't let the ghost bite. Oh, fuck. As you guys climb up, you manage to get pretty close to the top, but you look down and you see that the creature has also made its way up part of the tower. Oh, fuck. good. Okay. Um, <laughs> Throw a smoke bomb at it. <laughs> That's not going to do anything. The rain and storm pound down as the wind catches the tower and you feel it sway. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Yeah, I think Lurch is going to turn around and like stop on the like landing and uh, take my cool shotgun and try to lean over the railing and get to the monster and shoot him. Oh, fuck. Ooh. I'll give you this. You can lean over and shoot him and at least glance him, or you can wait till he's closer and get him good. Ooh. I think I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna turn back and be like, hey, go ahead, guys. I, th- I got this. And I cock the gun. Uh. Do you want me to <laughs> slow him down, Lurch? No, I think I got him. I mean, actually, yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> are you going to sing cats at him? <laughs> Man, I have killing knives. All alone in the moonlight. <laughs> <laughs> cats. No, I just go towards him and I'd be like, just immediately gets eaten. Yeah, for real. We all walk tall. No less than I would deserve. You guys make your way up the rest of the tower. You are now in the top part of it where you can easily look out and see the whole forest, even the camp from here. Inside, it is covered so as to help keep the sound and and try to keep it insulated. But how it looks now is just dark and empty. Shit. And I'm waiting on the stairs for Mm -hmm. Monster to come up to me. Gotcha. Well, we were going to tell a story to lure the thing here. Shoot. Okay. I don't know what to do now. I want to run and grab the binoculars and see if I can discern what the thing it dropped was. You look to see what it dropped and you're pretty sure it is probably one of the kids. Motherfucker. No, God, shit. no, no. Can I, can I, can I tell if child is breathing? Like, do they look hurt or bloody? You see the kid look like they're getting up. Oh, thank God. Okay. Hey, um, that's either Mikey or Johan. We gotta keep this thing distracted. Uh, should uh, one of us take the emergency rope exit down to them? As you say this, there's a loud crack of thunder, and you see a shot of lightning go through the sky. Oh, uh, we good. shouldn't be up here, y'all. What were we thinking? I don't know. We came up here to get a good vantage point so we could take this thing out, okay? So we just got to figure out, like, how do we launch our attack? We got to stay focused on why we came up here in the first place. I mean, listen, I think Lurch tries to shoot it. If that doesn't work, we lure it up here, leave it in a net, and then 
light this place on fire and hope lightning strikes it. That's that that'll kill me. It'll probably kill it. Works for me. Great. Lurch, how's it looking? Uh it's still coming up, I presume. It's getting very close to you. Ugh. Okay, there's like a couple coils of rope up here, right? I'd say you probably have one. Okay. It's a long one, but just one. It can get us down. Like, it's our emergency rappel. I, I pick up the rope and I say, all right, anyone up for building a booby trap? Sign me up. Tell me what to do. Um. Okay, so I think that maybe we like... Oh, shit. Okay, wait. I know what happens. Okay. So, um, All right. Scout's going to use, like, materials around to, like, build a snare, like a gigantic snare within the rafters of, like, the watchtower. Oh, and yes. <laughs> as she's doing this, she, like, goes over to Cube and is like, may I borrow one of your knives? Of yes. course. And uses it to, like, create, like, a stabbing mechanism. Yes. The thought being, like, we snare it, we net it, we push it over the side. Yes. Shove it and cut the the rope. Yes. Mm-hmm. To kill it. And Mots is, like, helping with, like, the angles, doing, like, mental math geometry yes! in his yes! head. Like, yes! okay, we get it yes. here. Oh, oh, like, two degrees left. Two degrees left. <laughs> As we're, like, finishing that MacGyver bullshit Home Alone delight, I'll, like, poke my head, like, down, be like, Lurch, how much time we got? You need to take a shot very soon. Shit. Yeah, I'm giving it five more seconds. <laughs> so for you guys to set up the snare and everything, I'm going to say one pull from each of you guys. That's fair. That's fair. That's okay. fair. From Cube? all three of us? No, just you two. Okay. Cube, I love you. Don't think you're doing too much on this. <laughs> I I contributed by holding the knife. Yes. All right, here I go. Okay. Okay, you sure you want to go first, Christine? Yes, because it's my okay. idea. Okay. I believe in Valid. you. Just don't pull from the top. I'll do <laughs> Just very bad on. Oh, oh, God. From the top. Just don't pull from the top. Just don't pull from the top. Nicely done. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> All okay. right. You're an advice to Marissa. Marissa. Crack my neck. Oh. All right. <laughs> oh, that was fine. Okay, we're good. Okay, we're good. <laughs> I'm so Alrighty. stressed out. <laughs> you guys are able to set up the snare. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can move to the other side of the room so that basically you put as much space between you and the door as possible as you stand in the dark, dark room waiting for the creature to come in. Lurch, you see the creature in your sights. You see as the cloak gets pulled apart, revealing it to be the lips for a gigantic mouth that spans its entire length. Hate it. You see the sharp, jagged teeth about the size of your forearm Fuck. that crisscross all throughout it and you see what once you thought to be a scarf unravel around him into a wickedly long tongue that now looks like it was partially cut into. Oh. Uh, you guys seen this one? And <laughs> point the gun at the monster. And I say, say hello to my little friend. <laughs> and I fire both barrels. You shoot at the monster and you watch as it gets flung back into the railing its tongue whips around wildly and its head kind of jerks back at an unnatural (gasps) angle. Oh shit. And it stays there for a minute. And then another. Hit it again. And it slowly starts to pull itself up and together the bone snapping back into place. Oh Oh, fuck. (sighs) You see as it kind of starts to collect itself and it starts to come back at you. Oh. I'm going to run back in to the back of the room and try to reload my shotgun. You try to reload your shotgun as the creature comes into the room. It starts to approach you, and as it does, its tongue shoots out and grabs onto Lurch. No! We activate the snare! Activate the snare! We're done. It's We're story done. time, bitch! <laughs> and and I light up like the firecrackers and throw them near the snare. Fuck! Good night, moon. (laughs) You watch as it gets hit with the snare, as it gets thrown up. It's still holding on to Lurch, and it whips him around the room. No, no, no. As it fumbles. 
you see Lurch crash into one of the windows around the tower, oh, then my back into one of the boards. Holy shit! It eventually lets go of Lurch. Lurch is not moving. Oh, fuck me. The tongue is whipping around wildly, trying to grab at any of you guys. It is in the net, and it is struggling. I am going to need a pull from both of you, though. To avoid it and to push it. Okay. 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 And Fab, this is important. Is Cube helping? Oh, God. Know that if Cube is helping, there's a very high chance that since you can't make a pull, that you're going to get hit. Um. You could be trying to take care of Lurch and get him up. That is another possibility. I'm very good at first aid. I'm going to be trying to take care of my good buddy Lurch. Oh, Jesus. Does he still have the shotgun on him? He does. I'm going to go towards the gun. Yeah. You grab the gun. Yeah, that's that's good. That that feels safe. Was I able to reload it before I became unconscious? I'll say you were able to reload it. I'll start tending to Lurch. All right. Now, I remember if your pupils don't dilate, that's a good sign. <sighs> okay, so we both need to pull. Okay, okay. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll go first, unless you want to go first. first. No, go ahead. I went first last time. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Some spots are good. Some spots are good. Come on, come on. Mods is great at kicking things. Are you? No. You're canonically <laughs> not good at sports. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm okay at Jenga. Oh. All right, Christine. <laughs> all right, Christine, you got it. You got okay. it. You fucking go. got it. Oh, my stomach. Oh. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Gonna be good. Uh, B-A-G-G-E-R-S. Badgers. Go. Badgers. Go. Badgers. Uh, okay. <laughs> Can I light the mortar in its direction to put it off kilter so that it falls Fuck out the window? Yes. Fuck yes. What's the mortar? The big fire. That's one of the big Oh, the big firework. firework. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like my in my head, it's like going around the room and like teetering towards the edge, and I set off the mortar to like give it the last little oomph, and then it explodes in the air as it's falling. <laughs> I think what would make the most sense reasonably is if you stuck it in the mess of the but net yes. and lit it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's okay. Better. Then I'll do that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm as we're like running around and trying to avoid the tug. Hell yeah. I stick the mortar into into the net and I say, once upon a time a monster got fucked. <laughs> and I light it and then like shove it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you both rush at it. Mots with all of the football dodging skills that you never had, <laughs> that you always claim to have. Yeah. Scout, like the fearless, adventurous girl you are, you yes. guys dive and weave and you get right up close to it where it has more trouble trying to hit you. You watch as Scout shoves it into it, yes. lights it, and as you both give one final push, cut the rope that was holding it still there, and you watch as it sails through the window that it broke with Lurch, <laughs> flies out, oh and it plummets. You watch as the tongue behind you gets whipped up. It knocks over Cube, oh, and God. it falls down with him. <gasps> no! No! Yeah! No! Does Cube explode? You wait for a second, and then you hear a thud, and then you hear an explosion. Oh! I'm stunned. I... I... Oh... <laughs> You guys stand there, looking over the edge, as a plume of smoke starts to come up. Can I- can, do I- do, <laughs> do I see Cube? You rush to the railing and look down, and you do see Cube. He's on the ground. Oh. Probably about five feet away from the thing on fire. Okay, okay, Scout, Scout, you got Lurch? Yeah, yeah, I got him. Okay. I haul ass like the track star I never was to try to get Q oh. away from this thing. Oh. You start running down, going two, three steps at a time, slipping and tripping on the wet stairs as you furiously make your way down. You get to the bottom, you rush over to Cube, and you can tell he is still breathing. Oh, oh. 
as the thing in the net writhes and squirms on fire, the water from the rain helping to put it out. But you can tell that there is something very wrong with it now. You see strange, not truly bones, almost more flexible. Some of them are just bent instead of broken, sticking up out through the creature. Oh, fuck. Is, 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 is the tongue con- contained? Part of the tongue has been blown off. Fuck yeah. <laughs> the part that got blown off is wriggling on its own on the ground, like a worm that's been cast out and chopped in half. The rest of it wriggles close to the body as this creature seems to be trying to struggle with its own life. Cube has knives. Am I conscious at all? You're unconscious. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Also, point of order, Mikey and or Johan is no longer in this clearing, right? (laughs) You look around to see them and you don't spot the kid anymore. Okay, Brad. Perfect. Um, Moss is going to like pick him up like under his armpits and just like drag him five feet back and like go through his um, pockets and take out like, like, like how many knives did you grab? Like three? As you're looking through stuff, you see the shotgun right next to him. Oh, shit. <gasps> oh, 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 oh. Double Mats, tap. Mats, <laughs> Mats double tap. Mats picks it up and he is like shaking. He like checks in that it's it's loaded. It's good. It is. Oh, oh shit. Okay, Mats takes a few steps closer to it, aims at it, and like is, is chanting the fucking like... A plus B times A minus B equals A, A plus B two. A. C- <sighs> As you get close to it, the creature turns, and you now see that instead of glasses, these are glass-like eyes, almost beady, almost like a bug shell. You see that the hat is a part of it, almost like it's connected to him. That everything about him is an appearance that is made out of skin and leather and sinew. You watch as it looks up at you, its eye broken, cracked like a mirror, as you can see yourself reflected back into it. And Mott's aims like right at that eye, like will put the shotgun as close to it as he can and just Uh. say, the end, and blow its fucking head off. (laughs) Yes! That's really fucking good. <laughs> Give me a pull. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, All fuck. Right. All right. Got this All right. Uh, All right. But if it falls, oh, oh gosh. Oh, All right. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Oh, my Come God. Come on. It's good. 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 Yes! Fuck yeah, Mots. Oh, my God. In the middle of the storm, in the middle of the thunder, the lightning of the wind howling and the rain blasting every surface it can find in the middle of the static in the middle of a child crying in the woods watching the scene in the middle of scout trying desperately to help her friend up top and wake him up in the middle of all of this a shot rings out The creature stops moving. It stays still. You watch as what's left of it, partial chunks of almost like a shell that was its face, remain. As it slowly burns and the fire is slowly muffled, it falls limp by the rain and the wind. This creature that you do not understand what it is, that has caused so much trouble, so much pain, hurt. You stand over it and you know that it is done. And then Mats turns to the left and just throws up. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck yeah. The next maybe half hour kind of goes in a blur for all of you. You are able to check on Lurch and Cube. Both of them are out, and you are pretty sure that they both sustained some pretty bad injuries. Things that might last their whole lives. But 
you think they'll live if they can get medical attention soon enough. Ooh. Oh, shit. Okay. You manage to get Lurch down the stairs with Q basically putting them under the tower so that they're somewhat sheltered. The kid that you saw earlier, Mikey, comes out and runs up and just grabs onto you, Mods. He's crying. There's like tears and snot coming down his face. He's got a little bit of a bruise on his arm from where you think the creature held him, but other than that, he does not seem injured in the slightest. Okay, thank God. I think Mots would, like, wrap him in a hug and he would not let go. After a little while, you hear no longer static coming in on your walkie-talkies. Instead, you hear a voice clear as crystal. Lori coming in. Uh, hello, hello, uh, uh, Scout, Lurch, Q, Mots, uh, anyone, can you please come in? Roger, Lori, coming in loud and clear. Where, where are you? What, what happened? How much time you got? <laughs> Do we have a tale for you? <laughs> it doesn't take long for groundskeeper Ted's beat up little golf cart to reach you guys. You guys manage to kind of get Lurch and Cube onto it in a moderately safe way. Are all of the adults there? Uh, just Groundskeeper Ted came out to meet you. You guys meet them back at the administrative building. There is an ambulance there, and you see another one coming up the way. In the ambulance, you see Lottie. <gasps> oh, shit! What? She's hooked up. It looks like she suffered some damage from the debris that fell on top of her. Whoa. But she seems to be pretty steady. Whoa. Oh, thank God. Oh, my God. It ate the ghost, not her. Oh, thank Christ almighty. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Lori pelts you with a billion questions, but the paramedics and stuff are able to quiet her as they give you all thorough checks, and especially the kids. They end up taking both Lurch and Cube away. When you guys get there, all the kids are, like, bundled up in blankets with, like, various hot drinks kind of situated you see Brandy, who was sitting there looking out nervously. When she spots you, Scout, she just drops her glass and she runs up and just gives you this huge hug. And you can tell she is not going to be letting go of you anytime soon. I definitely, like, I give her a big hug back and I, like, I crouch down. And I untie the bandana that's been around my Aww. hair and I like tie it like a kerchief around her neck and just kind of like straighten it a little bit. Scout's honor. It takes a long time for everything that happened that night to kind of settle. Lurch and Cube, you both suffered some pretty extreme injuries. Cube, you are unfortunately are not able to do the performance that you were really oh, excited fuck. for doing fuck <laughs> it's going to be a long recovery before you're able to walk again let alone do the dance and choreography that you need to so now you direct <laughs> <laughs> produce if you can't do you produce <laughs> yes fuck yeah <laughs> yeah lurch it takes a while too for you to be able to move your arm fully and to be able to use it correctly but both of you are on your way to a recovery it's just going to take time. For Mots and Scout, both of you remember what happened. You remember what you fought, what happened, and you guys go and visit Lurch and Cube as they are recovering, coming in occasionally whenever you guys can to check on them and see how they're doing, and to read some of the letters that the kids have sent all of you guys. Aww. Once thanking you guys for everything that you did, and letters from their parents too attached. You know, they don't really understand everything that happened, and boy, did their kids come up with some really creative stories. <laughs> oh <Oof, laughs> my gosh. But they know that there was some amount of danger involved, and that all of you guys put your lives on the line to keep their kids safe. And that means the world to them. As Mots and Scout meet up at the hospital to, like, go 
in we have like these bundle of letters and we have like you know like some flowers or stuff for like lurch and cube mott's like he's no longer wearing the letterman jacket he's in his like 1980s dork plaid like shirt and like weird 80s shorts and like he has started wearing his glasses again <laughs> which he needs and never wore he can camp. finally see that's why he had to get so close to it to shoot it because he couldn't fucking see it. <laughs> but uh, he, before they go in, will like pull Scout aside and like not be looking at her at all. And he would take a single flower out of the bouquet <laughs> and kind of sheepishly like <laughs> look down and be like, um, so, uh, X squared plus B squared. So, um, uh, <laughs> I don't I don't think marriage is like good, but do you wanna go like get some pizza? And I like hand you the flower. That sounds like an adventure I'd definitely be up for. Yes <laughs> Nobody died, so it's gotta be a comedy. <laughs> Very cute. There you go. The the camera pans away as you guys walk into the room holding hands with Cube and Lurch waiting for you as we see you guys meet up and Lurch and Cube start to razz you guys. Oh shit. Oh Lurch, look. Look at that. Look at that. I fucking called it. I called <laughs> it. <laughs> it only took him what? Like six summers? What do you mean you called <laughs> it? Fucking new Lurch. Shove my elbow at him. <laughs> We cut across far, far away over the landscape until we get back to the camp. We see some of the damage that the storm has caused it. We see some of the remains of the building that have been collapsed. And we go up into the hills until we get to the fire watchtower. In front of it, there is this burned, singed area we continue past it until we get closer to the mountains and we see a trail on the ground of something kind of wet and slimy and we get just a brief, brief glimpse of a long pinkish grayish tongue <laughs> as it burrows itself into the mines. <laughs> The end? (laughs) (laughs) This episode brought to you by Sour Gummy Worms. They taste better than a monster. Maybe that was how you guys were supposed to defeat him? (laughs) Citric acid? Shit, he's like all tongue. (laughs) Hey, thank you so much for listening to Dread and Breakfast. We would like to give another huge thank you to our dreaded Alicia for running this absolutely fantastic in-between season story. It was such a blast to play and she did such a phenomenal job. Alicia also created the artwork for this story and she is one of the most talented people that I know. So if you would like to give her a virtual round of applause, you can find links to more of her stuff on our website, dnbpod.com. You can find links to all of our cool stuff, including the camp map that Alicia made and sound credits, content warnings, and other general chaos on our social media. You can follow us on Instagram at dnbpod, on Twitter at Dread and Fast, or on Tumblr at Dread and Breakfast. Sorry, they're all different. Be sure to join us next week for our behind the scenes breakfast episode where we sit down with Alicia and talk about what it was like running the game for all of us buffoons. And there may be another cursed surprise in there as well. So you don't want to miss it. And if you wouldn't mind, it would be really cool and genuinely really appreciated if you told a friend about our spooky little show. Word of mouth is absolutely the best way to get new listeners, and oh boy, do we have plans in store. We are in the middle of preparations for season two of Dread and Breakfast, and holy shit, are we excited. I can't tell you anything yet because it's all super secret, but we are having a blast and we think you're really going to like it, and it's coming dreadfully soon. 
But in the meantime, thank you again so much for listening, and we'll see you at breakfast. Awoo!